Welcome to Our Given Purpose, the YouTube channel. I am Tori, your host, as well as the founder of OurGivenPurpose.com. I am a redeemed daughter of Christ, a theology student, writer, podcaster, and photographer. I am a happily married wife of 20 years to my beloved and our two sons, and also to Oscar. On this channel, you will find easy to navigate playlists. Right now, the Growing Our Given Purpose Facebook group is nearing the end of its 21-day Daniel Fast. We are just completing day 14. We have seven more days left. It has been an exciting time of prayer, scripture study, Bible study, and more importantly, getting to know each other, our families, and our coworkers. That is one of the things that is here. Beloved and I, we upload videos basically once a week. We did preparation videos and there's also some resources with the food list as well as a journal that is all free to download for you. If you so choose to do the Daniel Fast for yourself with your family, your church group, however the Lord leads you to do this particular fast. Of course, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Tori at OurGivenPurpose.com. The other playlist that you will see is from the blog, and that will be directly uploads from, and really a discussion or a continuation from the podcast coming from Apple iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Spotify. They will be directly linked to the content from that and may just warrant some further discussion because I've had conversations or, you know, something else just kind of popped up and it was worth actually talking about here on this platform. Last but not least, you will have spoken word. That is my next jump into being even more uncomfortable of being in the public eye. But also my point is to actually just direct you to God and to show you that living your life and living your life well for Christ and walking in his path and in his light guided by him, we can do all things. We are able to be creative and be encouraging and be inspiring to each other. And that is what my, I believe my purpose here is. So what is our given purpose? Well, my given purpose is to share what I'm doing with you and hopefully help you facilitate and get into a right space mind body, spirit, and soul, that you are able to share what you do your best and share it with others by witnessing what Christ has given us. And it is an incredible gift that we can continue to share with each other as we continue to become more uncomfortable with being in the public eye and just testifying to God's undeserved kindness of, of us. We do not deserve his kindness or he showers us with it each and every day. And it, I am just excited to be able to share that all with you. So that is my purpose. My purpose is helping you find your purpose and growing together in that purpose through God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. is an on the blog actual episode. I uploaded on Wednesday. If you're going to be fake, be super fake. That was the title of it and also the podcast, which I will link for you below. And from that, I got some questions and some direct messages and we ended up with a, with a conversation about the holidays. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and also navigating the holidays somewhat with ease, but it's about knowing ourselves. One way of navigating through that at the beginning, at the onset, is praying to God for that strength and endurance to be able to get through it. What will happen is you will enjoy being there and being around other people even more so than you ever thought possible. I know that when I started praying and saying, okay, I know that I need to be around these people for this amount of time and to do this and pour into them. When I prayed and I asked God for strength and wisdom and clarity and discernment to be able to know who I needed to talk to, know what I needed to do in those moments, the event was so much easier. It was so much better. And I came away with great memories and even better friends. So I would encourage you to first pray about any situation you're going into, whether it's an event or something you're planning on doing. Maybe it's a business venture 
partnering with someone or just on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe you just need that strength to get out of the bed. Whatever that is for you, whatever those obstacles look like for you that you're able to pray to God for because he is listening. So that's number one. Um, number two is to know your environment. When you know what you're going into, when you know the type of people you're going to be around, what you're going to be involved with, that again, that helps you. That is arming yourself with understanding and knowledge. So if you go in and you know that there's going to be alcohol served, that there's only going to be meat served and you're a vegetarian, um, if there's going to be a lot of music and you're going to be required to dance and you have two left feet, guilty, um, then knowing those things ahead of time really releases the anxiety of having to deal with it in the moment. You already know what you're going to be facing, so you can prepare for it as best you can mentally. But remember that God is there with you in that instance as well. If you pray and say, look, God, I know that I'm going to have to be you know, surrounded by these types of people. And how can you use me as a vessel to be able to pour into them? to see you, to see Christ through me, but then also how can I listen and learn and find out what people, you know, really need or want from me? Because sometimes we get so um, into ourselves, we kind of cocoon so much and we think that people expect the most from us and they really weren't. They didn't want anything other than for us to show up. Have you ever been in those moments where you think that somebody needs you to talk to them and they need you to, you know, tell them a story or to really share with them when all they really wanted was your presence? All they really wanted was for you to just sit there quietly and maybe just hold their hand. That's it. Sometimes we go in with our own expectations and they're wrong. So if you know your environment, you prepare yourself accordingly and say, okay, what is it that I need to be aware of? And then how else can I deal with this going forward each time and making myself stronger and also praying to God for it? The last thing I will offer you is to be gracious. Whoever your host is or whatever the situation, if you're coming in contact with people, perhaps they paid for your dinner or bought you a drink, be gracious. If they let you know that they have uh, maybe even purchased something from you or they read something of yours, be gracious. First, say thank you for them, the fact that they even noticed that you were doing anything. And then secondly, if it is a hosted event, make sure you thank the host. Let the person who organized it, who did the work, if you can find out who that was, especially if it's in a business or a company setting, let them know how appreciative you are because guess what? You didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do any of the cooking. You didn't have to put anything together. You didn't have to send out the invitation. So if you are just a guest and you are just showing up, by all means, show your gratefulness. Um, we talked about how to deal with the family gatherings. You're meeting the parents for the first time and maybe your um, beloved has not exactly told you or has been forthcoming with lots of information about their parents because they may not know. Um, in that instance, social media is your friend. You may be able to find out a little bit more about what the mom or the dad or the stepfather or stepmother, what they like. If they are just sharing and reposting other pictures, what is it? What is the content of it? What is the the, the root of what they're sharing? Is it is it scripture? Is it paintings? Is it birds? Is it is it snow mountains and the cabins in Alaska or what have you? That gives you some insight or idea of what it is that those that person or the people actually like, and maybe you can give either a gift accordingly or have some topics of conversation available for you so that you're not just sitting there kind of twiddling your thumbs and pushing around the, the stuff that you don't really want to eat. There is a way around that too, to make all of your situations super comfortable. Also, we have, in our families, we have game nights. They can either be widely successful, entertaining, good times, fun, or they can be destructive, um, perhaps ending up in the hospital because somebody got a little too handsy. One or the other, but we can be the peacemaker. So if we know our environment going in that... If we have that cousin, that relative, who does not know how to play cards very well, but they insist on being partnered with the best card player in the family, 
do them a favor. Take, take the loss, take the L. Go ahead, partner with that person so that peace for the holidays can be had. The bragging rights who goes to the best player, we already know he's the best or she's the best. We already know that. It's okay. Let them keep their crown. It is something that they have been looking for the entire year. Don't take that away from them. Don't be that person. Let them have it. There's no reason why the crown needs to shift. Let them keep it. Spoons is another game that apparently some of us know the rules to, others may not so much. Uh, that goes along with Uno as well. But Spoons more specifically because it does not matter your age. It does not matter if you are just learning how to walk. If you are at the table, you are fair game. And if you lose, you lose. So just be prepared for that. Know your environment. Last but not least, I want to just give a little bit about the one of the discussions I'm in the middle of. And she was just saying that she is kind of frustrated with a couple of her relatives or friends. And the frustration lies in the fact that they she calls them lazy bums. And I said, you know, we're all lazy in some way, shape or form. My lazy will look different than your lazy. What you're not doing may be something I do all the time and vice versa. She is frustrated because they are full of potential. They have so much going for them. They're highly educated, but unmotivated to do anything about it. And I asked her, I said, are you the only person who's bothered by it? And she said, well, if I'm honest, yes, I'm the only one who really brings it up on a regular. And I said, well, ding, 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 you have won yourself a project. That means that these people have been entrusted to you and you need to motivate them. Of course, she stopped typing for about an hour. I think something came up or not. But we have since <laughs> we have gone back into conversation and I just shared a few things with her. I said, you know what? First of all, we need to ask ourselves this. Is our desire to help another person because they are a reflection of us? Meaning if it's like your your son or your daughter or a very close relative, if they're not doing well, then it's a reflection on you, on us. So if so-and-so is just doing the least amount in order to get by, does that directly reflect on our parenting skills or the type of friend we are? That's something you have to look at. Number two, if they are unsuccessful, does that mean that you are now unsuccessful? That di direct correlation, almost like the yoke um, analogy as far as is this person dragging you? Are you dragging him or her? Or are you all equally balanced and you're able to walk together? And third is, do you want to help this person because God has put it in your heart to do so? Have you been, quote unquote, voluntold that you need to be there for this person to help them and motivate them? Now, after you've asked these questions and you've prayed about it and you've decided that, okay, the Holy Spirit is in fact telling me that I need to take this person under my wing, become successful and become the person that God wants them to. I am to actually help them do that. That's when you go into deeper prayer and you ask God to give you, give you an outline, give you the play by play tell you exactly how it is that he wants you to do this. Don't try to do this on your own. Do not go into this leaning into your own understanding and thinking that you are doing the best thing ever for these people by doing the most. And that may not be what God needs you to do. It may be a very simple solution and you've missed it completely and you've poured into these people or a person and now you are empty and depleted and you still haven't done any good. So be careful in those things. Pray in all things so you can grow wiser and understanding what God wants you to do. If you do those things, especially through the holidays, you should come out unscathed. Take the L. If you don't know how to cook, offer to clean. Take out the trash. Make sure that there's toilet paper in the bathroom. The little things are really what helps a family stay together and really enjoy the holiday season. It is the little stuff. Make sure that the toilet paper goes out and not behind the wall. Do that, okay? Turn this way, not backwards. Don't do it. Don't do it. Mm -mm. Don't do it. Don't be that person. But however you can find yourself useful in the holiday season, be it in business and company, at your friends, or even at family members, know your environment, prepare yourself. 
prepare yourself going in and you should be fine and actually be able to enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed my tips and tricks, sort of, of how to navigate through the holidays. And I am looking so forward to seeing you all again next Friday.